Welcome to my channel. This is a new video on Voyager astrophotography software. Let's go into my imaging computer so I can show you what I see on the screen. Um, Voyager astronomy software has been nice because it has allowed me to automate my observatory and um, this software comes from Italy. Um, the developer of the software has put a lot of work on making it reliable and uh, I have found it really easy to understand and to implement. In, I managed to, in a couple of days of trying, get my observatory to behave the way I want to. First thing first, um, uh, what I first want to show is what happens on the configuration. You go to the setup tab and this software lets you connect to all your gear. Um, here is where you connect to all your equipment. Here is where you program a sequence. I will show you that. There is where I program um, the script that allows me to automate the observatory. I can show you how one of my scripts look like. Okay, it looks like that. I will explain a little bit later when I load this into my system. It looks like this and it goes step by step doing everything I program to. Um, on the setup tab, what I have is a place to tell the system what's my camera, what's my mount, the guiding, how do I want to control the guiding, and um, a planetarium software on my computer. So in here you connect everything. Um, in my opinion, it was really straightforward. You just go look for the ASCOM driver, connect to the camera like in another software. You declare your filters in here. Um, set up the cooling ramp for cool down, warm up. I think everything is pretty much standard. What telescope you have, what type of mount, the guiding, in this case, this software controls guiding and controls focusing in a different way. Imagine you have a robot inside of the software and it picks the best star and the best settings and controls the guiding like you were there checking what's going on. It's really cool, in my opinion. All right, you have other options in there. This is the planetarium software. Uh, you can choose between all of these options or you simply leave it out. Plate solving. Um, uh, this is where you set up your plate solve and your blind solve solution. The auto focusing, I think this part is brilliant. Um, he just recently uh, implemented something called um, um, the autofocusing routine, it's called uh, local field and I tell you it works perfectly, it doesn't need to go into a star, it takes all the stars on the field and it's blazing fast, I love that. Just as a comment, in another software sometimes you have to calibrate the focusing routine. This thing you just you go to the first light wizard, it does whatever it has to do and it tells you I'm ready and that's it. Done. That's all I did. Um, I will make another video on an actual run, doing things manually, and then in another video showing how it behaves in automatic. Right? I don't use a rotator, but you can program it there. I have a flat device at the moment; it's disconnected. It's controlled by an Arduino board. I use a software from the same developer called Viking that controls my Dragonfly. Uh, Dragonfly is a a device with relays that you can control over the internet and I also would use it to control my roll of roof. That's where you tell it what type of observatory you have. These are the weather condition options depending on what's happening with the cloud watcher in this case. This is what the system will do. Um, just a quick run through it. Um, if it is clear it will say okay it's alright to resume. 
if it is cloudy or very cloudy I make it suspend suspend what it does it um, raises a flag where it stops and runs some options in my case I make it um, wait close the roof stop the tracking and just wait until the night becomes clear again and once it comes to clear again as you can see it resumes the imaging run um, if you declare one of these things as an exit it will raise an, ex um, an emergency exit and, and goes into a different routine that I will explain later the software has something amazing in my opinion as soon as you open it it connects to the weather control uh, system it controls it connects to my cloud watcher and it's always reading what's going on right it's always checking that it's safe or not safe to open the observatory to run okay um, what I will do now I will show you what uh, what it looks like when you connect to your equipment I'm gonna check I should have green light to connect if I connect to my equipment it connects to the mount connect to everything I will minimize this thing yeah it's connecting now to guiding to everything I just programmed in there okay this is how it looks when it's connected okay I have a program that it cools down the the camera tries to cool down the camera when it connects um, I don't have the cooler connected at the moment so it will keep trying I don't care about that at the moment I'm just showing you these are the panels where it shows the status of the mount the operations is being done how to focus routine cooling of the camera shows up a little display on the camera on the guiding sorry and um, here it shows what's happening with um, here it shows what's happening with uh, the target um, where it rises where it sets uh, what part of the imaging you are how far are you from flipping going to the meridian and this is my weather um, at the moment logically it's daytime it's on suspend um, I'm gonna show you something on the on the fly menu and there are two ways of working with Viking as I see it right one way is working on a script and then you call a sequence to be shot or you can work on a sequence and you use a script to do closing or opening it it all depends to what you want in my case I work on a sequence on a script and uh, from the script I call a sequence so this is where you can run a sequence or you can just make a sequence and run it right away without any automation um, in this case let's say I can just go there and look for a target um, uh, um, for a two it will find the target and as you can see it will display when it, the darkness starts and this is where it flips and um, I can tell it use this target it's beautiful um, important for me I can tell it in here make a blind solve um, I can inject uh, in here I can ask the system to run an autofocus here I go to the sequence and this might be familiar to people it's really simple if you're using M42 let's use these three slots to do light frames sorry light frames light frames and then go red green and blue um, let's say 60 second exposure each and uh, let's say eight photos each or whatever you want to do okay this software has many parts so I'm running through all of the settings to show a little bit what it does and then maybe I will do other videos different parts going in detail this is where it's gonna send the images you can set up um, scripts or do actions before uh, when it starts or when it finishes 
in this case I could run a software here when it starts I could tell it wait this time before starting run this software or this script after it's the time wait in here point the target of start normally I do like that um, inject the focus on start um, if I have a flat device with a cover so you have to remember to open it you do it in here you can select if it does it on start or after the time declaring there this is where you control the cooling you can say yeah I want to do that use the firmware cooldown and maybe go minus 15 um, tracking pointing plate solving meridian flip in this case I go manage meridian flip guide I use Voyager Robo guide Robo guide chooses the star and those beautiful things with guiding it works really nice I go here and then in my case I go four seconds um, one by one, by one beating um, dithering then I go here don't usually the, this part focusing is where I go to local field um, you can focus there is a dif there are different ways a Voyager can work taking a photo here a photo there a photo a red one green one blue one red one green one blue one and then you just focus every five exposure for example or you can tell it to focus by slot so it will focus and then take all the reds and then focus take all the greens and each five exposures it will refocus again it all depends how how you want to use it and um, you can tell it to run um, robo star which is focusing a star if local field fails I don't use that um, on error this is what the system can do on error means um, we have a, um, a problem with um, any of our devices and then you can call it I shut everything down and move the CCD to a filter warm up the camera park the telescope and on end run this script what happens is I don't use this on start this on error this on end because all these functions are declared on my script okay let's say you have um, added all your frames you want to shoot um, the system here knows where it's going you click OK you can save the sequence in my case I'm going to show you a sequence I have here on this target I shot luminance red green and blue and I saved it there with a name whatever name you want um, AGC 1232 sequence after you save it you close it off you could run the sequence in here and it just starts going or what I'm doing now um, I'm going to that script let me tell the camera not to try cool I'll turn it off yes as you can see in status in here I can go to commands and I can manually set up things like for example go to a different filter or turn off the cooler park the mount or uh, open and close the roof uh, it's connected but it hasn't because I haven't done anything on the roof it's telling me error but as soon as I click open it will open the roof it will declare opening and then it will say it's open when it reaches the end point that's good um, this is the script on the script um, what happened is um, at the start of the script it's waiting for 30 minutes before astronomical darkness and in order to do that you give it your latitude longitude and um, once it does that it sends me an email saying I'm starting mate um, then it connects to my input card and output card which is my dragonfly uh, after connecting to that it will trigger power on the relays that I need 
to power up on. After it does that, connects to all the devices in my setup. And if everything is finally connected to everything, uh, it will go and open the shutter, which is a roof. Let's say things are not all right. So jumps into this part, it waits 15 seconds and then tries again three times to connect to everything. If it fails, it terminates the session. It will jump all of this and it will simply terminate the session. And that's it, okay? Terminate the session is close the roof, shut down everything, send me an email, everything went wrong, whatever, okay? Let's say everything was fine. So it jumps to open the shutter if weather is okay, which is this block over here. And this block uh, open shutter, just in case. If it is okay, it will send me an email saying, mate, I have opened the shutter and it will go to the start mount procedures. That's a block that I made where it unparks the mount. It will slew to a specific position of the stars on the sky and um, it will wait five seconds and then make a blind solve with sync the mount. It will that way know exactly what it is. If everything goes fine, start your sequence. All right. Again, if it, something fails, it will try to repeat this procedure until it succeeds, if there was any issues, or it will send me an email saying mm -mm, it will shut down, okay? Let's say everything went fine, goes to sequence. Uh, the sequence that I created before that I shown you, I just saved it in here, 12.32, and it will, once it lands in here, it will start doing, taking the images, doing the guiding, doing the autofocus in a side setup on the sequence, all right? Once it finishes, it will return an OK flag to the script, all right? And as you can see, says if everything is OK, go to terminate session. Or you can put another sequence if you want. In this case, depending on how you design the night, how, how high are your targets, it all depends on the logic you want to put into your script. If there is any error, send me an email. There's been an error and terminate the session, right? This is the block where it ends, where it terminates the session, sends me an email. It's about to change um, close everything, close the shutter, send me an email saying an error has happened if there is a problem. So there is another sequence of relays to shut down or to try again to close the roof. Um, it happens that if everything's fine, it will run a got night uh, conditions where it warms up the camera, packs the mount, whatever. And this is the part I want to show a little bit. Um, these events are events that could happen at any time, any point on the script, any part of the night. Remember the place where I show you this weather, this OK resume, suspend and exit. OK resume is every part of the script that things and safe conditions are met. But suspend conditions and exit are declared in this part of the script. Um, in my case, an emergency suspend will go into that mode and wait all the way to 4 a.m. By then it will terminate all the script. <clears throat> I suspend uh, orders the observatory to close the shutter, stop tracking um, and wait for a bit. Once it goes to OK on resume, it will go back to the top of the, the, the script. How it does that, it goes to resume in this part wait a little bit, open the shutter, wait a little bit, and resume from the top, okay? Let's say everything goes wrong, something goes wrong, and it goes to emergency exit, emergency exit terminates everything, and then it goes again to the same sequence, close the shutter, pack them out, that way. Um, as you can see here, I have another another beautiful script that I did where the system goes to a sequence 
and after it finishes the sequence, if everything has fine, it will park the mount and go into a flat sequence. On this flat sequence, it will start connect and start the the flat panel and shoot my flats. And after it does that, automatically, boom, terminate the session. So this is what I do with my scripts. This is what happens if you go to edit the script. Um, I will go in detail in another video about this part of the software, but what happens is you create something called blocks, okay? And if you drag it there, you can create a block that's called start, and inside of a start, you can put actions like something like connect to all your equipment, okay? And then let's say you will say unpack the mount. End of the day, you can do whatever you want, and it will run it one after the other. Go to this altitude and azimuth, and you have to configure what altitude, altitude, what azimuth you want. Yeah, no. And uh, or go to an object by name. Okay. I will do another video on scripting so I can explain exactly what I did before. Nope. So this is Voyager at the moment and this is what I'm using to open and close automatically to shoot and to leave the observatory running while I sleep. It's been really, really good and support from Leo, the developer, has been outstanding. Um, if I tell him I have a little bit of an issue or it would be better to do something, he just replies in hours try this file, tell me if it goes right, send me the log, and he takes care of things. Um, I will make another video going to set up of the system, and then I will go on scripting. I would really like to make a video showing how it works under the stars. So just hoping this is um, helpful for someone. Um, Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's been nice to use the software and I just want to share it with people. This video has been sponsored by Sidereal Trading. They sponsor my equipment and um, give great support. And if you need more information, please go into the Voyager um, site um, or if you want, just drop in my webpage and leave a comment. Thank you so much.